Thank you, everyone. Good to be back here. Uh, welcome to our second weekly webinar. I see that uh, most of those who had joined us last time are present today as well. That is absolutely amazing. So consistency is what is going to help us make a big difference. And uh, those of you who are joining us for the first time, I hope you've checked out the recording of our previous webinar. What we did last time was some critical reasoning questions, uh, you know, which were based on sets. That is, we could use the concept of sets to understand them better. This time, we are going to do critical reasoning questions based on weighted averages. Except for the first question, we'll just review what we did last time. So we'll take a fresh critical reasoning question based on sets as the first question, and then we'll go on to our weighted averages. All right, let's take a look at it. It's an interesting question. So finding of a survey of high shop magazine subscribers. So here is the finding of subscribers of a magazine. 30% of all merchandise orders placed by subscribers in response to advertisements in the magazine last year were placed by subscribers under age 35. Okay, so there is a group of people who are these. These are the subscribers of the magazine. And, um, you know, so they, they would be made up of Two, people, two kinds of people, right? The ones who placed some orders and the others who did not place any orders. Now we are talking about the people who placed some order of, of the merchandise that is advertised in the magazine, that 30% of these, they were of age less than 35, right? So then that means 70% of these were of age greater than or equal to 35. This is what our this statement tells us does that make sense right this is the finding of the survey of the subscribers okay now look at this one finding of a survey of advertisers in high shop magazine now we're talking about advertisers so there is one more group now these are the advertisers of course these are different groups right these are the people who advertise in the magazine so basically who pay the magazine to run some advertisements most of now what now all the orders they have an idea the advertisers know of all the orders that come through right okay so what did they find that most of the merchandise orders placed in response to advertisements in high shop last year were placed by people under age 35 most most means more than 50 percent let's say 60 percent we are assuming that 60 percent so what did the advertisers find but 60% of the orders came from people who were less than 35 years, right? So do you see that out of the subscribers, we found that 30% came from people who were less than 35. But the advertisers found that 60% came from people who were less than 35. Now, they, all, they both are belong to what? The High Shop magazine, right? We're discussing what happens in High Shop Magazine. So these are the subscribers of High Shop Magazine and these are your advertisers in High Shop Magazine. Okay, now for both of the findings to be accurate, in case we have to say that both of them are accurate, which of the following must be true? So then what must be true? Now, keep in mind, first of all, now, you know, the moment I put the data in this format, what am I thinking? I'm thinking, that okay, so these are the subscribers. They have placed orders with, um, you know, of the merchandise which is advertised, but these advertisers would be getting orders from somewhere else as well, isn't it? What about the non-subscribers, the people who have not subscribed to the magazine? Right, they would be getting orders from not only the subscribers, but also from the non-subscribers, right? Well, it has to be in case I have a two to 60% less than 35, there has to be another group coming in, right? I am thinking then, again, my weighted averages, I'm saying that these subscribers, they are only 30% less than 35. I'm talking about people who are less than 35. But the advertisers, the total, because advertisers are the ones who know about the total orders, right? Whether they are from subscribers or non-subscribers. There I find that here 60% belong to the less than 35 category. Mm -hmm. Just like we have mixtures, isn't it? That, you know, one is mixture, solution one is mixed in solution two, and then you have some average concentration, which makes me think that the non-subscribers mostly, maybe, you know, 90%, I don't know, 
may be must most of them must be less than 35 who are placing the orders right this is where i'm thinking of weighted averages because the numbers have to make sense otherwise how will the numbers make sense all right now uh, we have to um, look at look for the correct option so a says more subscribers to high shop who have never ordered merchandise in response to advertisement the magazine are age 35 or over than are under age 35 so now they are talking about the subscribers who have never ordered merchandise. Please keep in mind that this group is out of scope for us. It's irrelevant for us. Why? We are talking about only those subscribers who have ordered, right? Now, it is possible that let's say the magazine has 100 subscribers. Let's say 60 of them have never ordered. But we are talking about these 40 who have ordered. And we are saying that 30% of these, that is 12 of them, are under age 35. Our entire argument, our entire data, it revolves around these 40 only the ones who have placed an order. So what is happening in those who have never placed an order, we don't know and we don't care either, right? So this is out of scope for our argument. Okay, among subscribers to High Shop, the proportion who are under age 35 was considerably lower last year than it is now. Okay, so now, you know, the moment I read this option, what do I do? I go back to my argument and I see that the data is given for which year. It is given for last year. So whatever is given to me, there is no increase that they are talking about year on year increase data is not there. Everything that they are talking about is last year. They are saying that this is what happened last year. Now how the proportion today has changed doesn't matter, isn't it? I am trying to explain how this 30% number and 60% number happened last year. So then this again is out of scope. Most merchandise orders placed in response to advertisements in High Shop last year were placed by High Shop subscribers over age 35. What is this saying? That most orders that were placed in last, um, the, um, last year were placed by the subscribers over age 35. Are they saying that most orders were placed by these people? Is that correct? Does that, does that help? Um, resolve the conflict that is there? Does it help resolve the 30%, 60% numbers? No, it is in fact against the data that is given to us, right? What are we given? That 30% were from the people who were uh, aged 30, less than 35, right? Here they are saying most orders were placed in response uh, and these people were, right? Okay, most merchandise orders placed in response to advertisements were placed by high shop subscribers over age 35, right? So this we already know. That's correct. So we are given that 30% were less than 35, I'm sorry, but and we already know that 70% were by greater than or equal to 35, right? So this is all that it says. This is something we already know. It doesn't help us resolve the 30% and the 60% number, right? So then this is also not the answer. D, last year, the average dollar amount of merchandise orders. Okay, the moment I read this, I say, let me just cross it out. I am not interested in reading this. Why? Because the average dollar amount or the dollar amount or the total dollar amount is absolutely irrelevant to us. We are talking about the number of orders placed, right? Our entire argument talks about the number of orders. So then the dollar amount of the orders is out of scope for us. We don't have to worry about that at Okay, then of course, by elimination, the answer must be E. Let's just take a look at it. Last year, many people who placed orders for merchandise in response to advertisements in High Shop were not subscribers to the magazine. So now they are saying that many people who placed orders were not subscribers. So they're saying that a lot of people were non subscribers also. Now, here is where our non subscribers comes into the picture. So then, if a lot of people were there who were non subscribers, uh, most of them could have been less than 35 and that would resolve my conflict of the 30% and a 60% number, right? If these were like almost 90% of them, just assuming were less than 35, then it resolves my overall why I got a 60%. Isn't it? Look, even if this did not come to your mind that there would be people who would be placing orders who would be non-subscribers, it doesn't matter. When you read the options, then it will come to your mind. 
right then you will be able to uh, re then you will be able to place it that yes if there are non subscribers also then my scale suddenly comes into the picture then i have subscribers 30% i have overall 60% so then there must be non subscribers at a much higher percentage right hmm. of course so then the answer is e it is one of those questions where if it strikes, immediately you have the answer in front of you. And if it doesn't, then it will, you know, just drive you crazy. So let's take a look at it together. So educational theorists, recent editorials have called for limits on the amount of homework assigned to school children younger than 12. They point out, so the theorist is talking about editorials, what the editorials are saying, right? He's giving us that. So they are, he says that they are talking about the homework assigned to kids younger than 12. They point out that free time activities play an important role in childhood development and that homework in large quantities can severely restrict children's free time, hindering their development. But the actual average homework time for children under 12, look now here, here a theorist has started. Now he is giving his own data, his own opinion, right? Over here, he was just quoting the editorials. But the actual average homework time for children under 12, little more than 40 minutes per night, leaves plenty of free time. So this is what this is what our theorist says. This is the data he gives. This is his premise. He says that, that the homework given is just little over 40 minutes per night for children under, under 12. And of course, if the homework is like just a little over 40 minutes, you have plenty of free time, right? So in reality, therefore, the editorial's rationale cannot justify the restriction they advocate. So they're saying, so he says that the editorial's rationale is that there is no free time. So you should reduce the amount of homework, right? The restriction is that you reduce the amount of homework. The rationale is that kids don't get any free time. But he's saying, but then in reality, the rationale does not justify the restriction. So he's saying, you know what, there should, there should, um, you should not restrict homework. This is what a theorist is saying. He's saying, not restrict homework. Yeah, this is what he is saying. He's saying it's all right. He's saying that the homework that they get is for just a little over forty minutes. Right? They have enough free time. So what are you talking about, right? Okay. So this is what the theorist says. Now, which of the following, if true, would most seriously call into question the theorist's conclusion? So this is the theorist's conclusion. He says, do not restrict homework. It's absolutely fine. Anyway, they're getting like barely like 40 minutes plus homework. But we have to weaken that. We have to weaken most seriously calls into question, which means we have to find a reason why what the editorials are saying, they do have merit. That is, we have to give a reason why they do not have free time. The kids do not have free time. Why restricting homework is required. Restricting is required. Yeah, be very clear when we talk about whether it is a strength in order we can, what is the conclusion? What do we have to look for? Because it's just so easy to get lost over there. So after I read my argument and my questions, then what am I looking for? I'm going to think about this. What am I looking for? I'm looking for an option that tells me that it is not necessary that the kids um, below 12, they do have a lot of free time. And right? I have to give some data which supports that, you know what, they may not really have a lot of free time. And that restricting homework might be actually a good idea. Okay. Now, option A. Some teachers give us homework, uh, give as homework assignments, work of a kind that research, research suggests is most effective educationally when done in class. Look, this talks about the kind of homework that is irrelevant to us. Mm -hmm. Kind of homework, we don't care whether, you know, what kind of homework is given, whether that is better done in the class or better done at home doesn't matter to us. We're talking about the amount of homework and that is why this is out of scope only amount of homework, how long it takes to do that. Okay. B, for children younger than 12, regularly doing homework in the first years of school has no proven academic value, but many educators believe that it fosters self-discipline and time management. So basically it tells us, um, you know, that home, doing homework maybe perhaps has no academic value, but it fosters other things. Well, that's fine. No one is against homework, right? We're not saying that there is no value to the homework. 
So it doesn't matter. It doesn't weaken our argument. So certainly this is also not correct. Okay, then some homework assignments are related to free time activities that children engage in such as reading or hobbies. What does this option mean? Sometimes it confuses people. What it means is that some homework assignments, they are related to free time activities, which are, let's say, you know, reading a book. So maybe a homework assignment could be um, talk about a book that you read, right? Or uh, a vacation that you took place, talk about your latest vacation, etc. right? Doesn't matter. So they're saying that some homework assignments, they are related to free time activities. Now, again, it is telling us about the kind of homework, isn't it? It's not talking about the amount of homework. What do we have to say? We have to say that, yeah, kids normally do not actually have free time and that restricted homework is probably required. Now, what kind of homework they give and what relevance that has? Absolutely none, at least to our argument. So again, this is incorrect, okay? D, a substantial proportion of school children under 12, particularly those in their first few years of school, have less than 10 minutes of homework assigned per night. So, you know, the first time you read, you're like, okay, that's great, isn't it? We are given that there is, that a homework for less than 12 year olds is, you know, a little more than 40 minutes. And this is telling us that actually the pre-nursery kids, the really young kids, they have less than 10 minutes of homework. So it's kind of all right. I mean, it's it seems to be kind of supporting what the author is saying, isn't it? That they already are not getting much homework. So please don't put any more restrictions. Mm -hmm. Just hold that thought. Let's look at option E also. Some free time activities teach children skills or information that they later find useful in their schoolwork. So this is giving us some advantage of free time activities. Well, no one is denying that free time activities are useful. Neither is the theorist nor are the editorials. Of course, everyone is in favor of free time activities. All that the theorist is saying is that free time, there is enough time. He's saying that there is enough time for people to engage in free time activities, right? No one is denying that um, they are important. So then, obviously, then this is also not the answer. So then look, we have crossed out four of the options and then well, this is the only one left. Normally, we would have crossed this out as well. But then, and this is a very little thing. You know, again, thinking about weighted averages helps over here. What does it tell us? It tells us that kids less than 12 years of age, they get on average about 40 minutes of homework. Then option D tells us that the very young kids, they actually get only 10 minutes of homework. So then tell me, as per our weighted averages, what does that imply? What does it mean? It means that the older kids, let's say the 10 and 11 year old, they get a lot more homework. If these very young kids, let's say five, six year olds, they get very, very little homework. And if the average is 40, that means that these kids probably are getting two hours of does that make sense, right? Here we are given, given particularly those in their first few years of school. So the ones who just started school, the really young ones, they get very, very little homework. So how did this average of 40 minutes come into being? It must be because the others are getting a whole lot of homework. And now this calls into question what the theorist is saying, right? The theorist was saying, you know what, kids only get 40 minutes of homework. So what are you talking about? They have enough free time. But what if they're actually getting two, three hours of homework? Then they don't have enough time, isn't it? So that is why our answer is option D. You may gloss over it the first time you read it. But then once you eliminate all the other options, you would come back to it. And then hopefully this will strike. The weighted average concept will strike here. Yeah. Okay, 